how many wheels? <clears throat> how many wheels does a bicycle need? Well, two is the answer. Now, I don't mean to mislead, but the real question is, who's riding this bike? Will two be enough when obsession now strikes? I'll need two for the wet when the rain is falling, and I'll need two more for weekends with cafe stops calling. And what if one breaks? I'll need a spare. Now I want some deep sections to cut through the air. And before you know it, that's another few pairs. But I look. All of my wheels are aluminium. So now I want carbon. And I found a bargain. 60 millimeter deep sections and the weight. I beg your pardon. These are light. But now I'm surrounded by wheels left and right, a set for every occasion, regardless of the riding situation. So that is it. No more. I am through. Ten wheels for one bike. I only ever needed two. Uh, do you want another set of wheels to review? Don't mind if I do. Hello, and welcome back to another marvellous Trace Fellow production. My name, as always, is Luke. And today, it's a Sunday, so I'm also enjoying a rather delicious raspberry Belgian beer. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. I know. What a loser. So over the last 15 years or so, as my interest in cycling has grown and what started out as an innocent hobby has slowly but surely spiralled into a crippling obsession, I have amassed quite a few wheels over those years. Most of those wheels, it has to be said, are aluminium, but you'll know if you watch this channel that relatively recently, I bought myself this pair of rather tasty looking deep section carbon rims on eBay for um, an equally tasty price. And yeah, they've been a fantastic uh, wheel set really. Not completely smooth sailing, it has to be said, which you can uh, learn about here. Bing. But yeah, all in all, a rather cracking pair of wheels. However, I can totally understand that buying a pair of wheels like this, it is not for everyone. They are completely unbranded, and as such, you don't really know who made them or where they were made. And at the end of the day, you're not completely guaranteed quality products every time. So there is inherently risk involved in a purchase like this. There are a number of things you can do to mitigate that risk. For example, you can choose a seller on eBay or AliExpress, for example, with great reviews and a really good history of selling kind of similar unbranded products. And you can also kind of take it easy for the first 100 or 200 miles to kind of put the products you've bought through your own set of quality assurance tests. But yeah, all that being said, I can totally see why a purchase like this would put a lot of people off. Uh, sorry, I just thought that last comment was absolutely hilarious. So in light of this, I got my hands on these rude boys. So these are a set of 55 millimeter deep section carbon aero rims from a company called Fastports. And they design and build their own carbon rims in China. And they also come with something called a warranty crazy. So I've done about 400 miles on these rims so far and that is about 640 kilometers and that's mainly been on my commute but I've also done a few cheeky little rides out into the Surrey Hills but I mean ultimately that's not a great deal of mileage but I think it's more than enough 
to get a really good feel for how these rims perform. But full disclosure here, Fastboards actually sent me this set of wheels. Now this isn't the first time that companies have offered to send me stuff to review, but it is the first time I've accepted. And that's basically because I've got free reign to do this review however I want, which is kind of cool. Plus, I think it's gonna be quite interesting to pitch these slightly more premium carbon rims against basically these ultra budget eBay carbon rims that I've been riding uh, thus far. So um, with that in mind, let's get uh, let's get cracking. But oh, one more thing. I always put timestamps in the video descriptions for my for my videos. So if you kind of want to jump around the topics or don't want to watch the whole thing, you can go and check those out. Anyway, let's get going. Right, welcome back to the tip top, top down, tabletop review. So first up, let's have a quick look at the construction of these rims. So they are 55 millimeters deep and they are comprised of a UD or unidirectional carbon fiber. And that is opposed to the kind of more recognizable bi-directional woven carbon fiber that most of us associate with the material. But in my opinion, this looks really, really nice. I think these look really pro. Um, also the width, the width of these rims, the external width is quite wide actually. It's difficult to show you with the tire on, but the width is 26 millimeters wide. And these are actually the widest set of rims I own. My other eBay carbon rims, they are 25 millimeters wide and my aluminium Bracciano kind of deep section rims, those are 19.5, so these are nice and wide. And the benefit of that is that the transition between the rim and the tire is nice and smooth. If the rim was much narrower, the tire could bulge out over the top. And that's not ideal for aerodynamic properties, um, on paper at least. I'm sure in reality it makes bugger all difference, but you can brag about it to your bulgy tired mates, I guess. Um, oh, and the weight for both of these, the weight comes in at 1580 grams, which is actually identical to my set of eBay carbon rims. Right, okay, cool. So the hubs we've got on these. The hubs on these here are DT Swiss 350 hubs, but you can actually spec out kind of whatever hubs you want when you get these wheels built up. But um, for these hubs, I've had a great experience. They're super smooth and I've had absolutely no issues at all, really. In terms of wet weatherproofing, I've only run them in the rain a couple of times, but they seem to have held up slightly better than the kind of cheaper style Powerway hubs on my eBay carbon rims. Plus, they are an absolute breeze to service. Um, so if you need to re-grease them or anything, they literally just pull apart and you can kind of service them then and there. Um, let me grab the rear wheel and I'll show you that quickly. Right, so bringing in the rear wheel, this is the free hub, and say you needed to service it or check there was any water or grit in there, all you do is literally just pull it off and that's it. And you can get access to literally everything. Um, if I show you, I've still got the old cassette bite there, which is something I've just come to accept nowadays, to be honest with you. This is an aluminium free hub and I always get them. Um, it's a little bit irritating because I tend to swap out the cassettes on my uh, on my wheels quite often, depending on the gradient I'm riding. For example, if I'm commuting, I'll generally have an 11 to 25 cassette there. But if I'm doing some steeper gradients, I'll swap it out to an 11, 32 for the Surrey Hills or something. So having cassette bite like this really makes that job a little bit more difficult because you essentially have to kind of hammer the cassette off the free hub. And um, when I come to replace this, what I'll probably do is end up investing in a steel free hub, which will run me about 40 quid, I think, which should eliminate this problem completely. You have failed me for the last time. Oh, and one more quick thing. It's the obligatory free hub sound test, which I'll quickly throw up. So yeah, as you'll have heard, not particularly loud. In fact, I can show you here. Yeah, not super loud. Um, and actually when you're riding these on the bike, it's, it's near silent, which I actually like, to be honest with you. Really complements the whole stealth aesthetic I'm going for. 
Right, moving on to the spokes for these rims. Let me show you there. So you should see, yeah, Sapim. So the spokes we have here are Sapim CX Ray spokes. 20 at the front and 24 on the rear. And again, no complaints at all. These are basically some of the best spokes in the game. So I was expecting good things. No breakages and spoke tension is still nice and uniform around both rims. So yeah, all good. Right, moving on. Right, so from the factory, these wheels were super duper true, both of them, as you would kind of expect really. And this is how they run now after 400 miles, well, just over 400 miles, about 420 miles. Um, so check it out. So as you can tell, still running really, really true, like no deviation at all, not even in the rear wheel, which is where all the power goes through. I mean, 400 miles is nothing really to write home about mileage wise, but still, I'm impressed. And so far, so good. Right, so here is what the brake track on these wheels looked like fresh out of the box. And here is what they look like now. So I'll try and show you here on camera, but if it's not coming out, I'll throw up some pictures. But basically there is zero damage on these rims. I am very, very impressed. Okay, editing Luke here. And after seeing this, I've taken a little bit of acetone and wiped down the rims as per some forum advice that I found to clean off that gray brake pad residue that you can probably make out. And here they are, freaking sparkling clean. And this was after about another 100 miles as well. So pushing 500 miles now or 800 kilometers. And I'm seriously impressed. They basically haven't got a scratch. Anyway, let's get back to it. But just to quickly explain, with carbon rim brake wheels like this, the composition of the brake track here is super critical in two areas, heat resistance and durability. So regarding heat resistance, when you brake on these style of wheels, all the kinetic energy of you and the bike moving forward is turned into heat via friction. Incidentally, carbon is actually a really good insulator. So it doesn't transfer heat very well at all. And as a result, under heavy braking, this part of the rim can easily get above 200 degrees C or 400 Fahrenheit. So it's critical that the resin used in the construction of these rims is stable at those high temperatures, or it could denature and the rim could potentially fail, but fast sports use decent high temperature stable resin with their wheels. So in this respect, this shouldn't be an issue with these rims. Right, so regarding durability, on my eBay carbon rims, the brake track was a resin and basalt mix. So basalt is a dense volcanic rock and basalt fibers were mixed in with the resin on my eBay rims, again, to help dissipate the heat and aid in durability. And let me quickly see if I can show you the difference between the two. So hopefully you should be able to see there, there is a slight difference in the look of the brake track. And to be fair to those eBay rims, they held up really well. But the brake track on these rims is a little bit different. So rather than adding basalt to the resin, Fastballs opted to add silicon carbide into the mix. And they call this their HMX compound for the brake track. So silicon carbide is a super hard material coming in at nine to 9.5 on the most hardness scale, just under diamond actually at 10. So theoretically, these brake tracks should be super hard wearing and they've definitely proved that much so far because as you might be able to see, literally zero damage on these bad boys. Well, 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 would you have a look at these? Now I think I speak for everyone when I say, hot damn, do these wheels look good? So basically, yeah, I think these wheels look pretty damn good on the bike. Not too flashy, but definitely look the business. So you can obviously choose different color options for the text on the wheels. And I think Fastboards actually offers different color options for the rim itself as well. But I went for black on black on black 
with black cables. So as you can tell, I kind of like the stealthy look for my bike. But rather than spending the next few minutes oogling over these rather delicious wheels, there is another aspect of the construction that I would like to go over quickly. So these rims are tubeless ready or tubeless compatible. And that basically means you can run either the regular clincher, tire and inner tube combo, or you can set them up and run them tubeless like I have here. And that's basically because the rim itself is airtight from the factory because there are no holes drilled directly through the rim bed to install the spokes like you get on a kind of regularly constructed wheel. Uh, but I won't go into too much detail here because the, the topic of tubeless rims warrants a video all of its own basically because there's so much to talk about. But needless to say, my word, do these rims feel nice to ride? Like I was blown away and that's not an exaggeration. Now, don't get me wrong, setting up and maintaining tubeless rims is a massive faff and actually a lot more effort than the kind of regular clincher and inner tube combo. But holy moly, is it worth it? In my opinion, you can run them at much lower pressures without risk of pinch flats, which a lot of research suggests actually lowers your rolling resistance. And consequently, they just feel so smooth to ride on the road. It's genuinely incredible. Um, oh, hang on. I've just got word. Yeah, our man out in the field, Trace Fellow, is testing these right now. So Trace, over to you. Okay, welcome to the wondrous Richmond Park on a sunny, albeit quite chilly, Sunday morning, but it's made all the better by these fantastic pair of wheels I've got on my bike. So the first thing you notice when you get on them is just how smooth they are to ride. So I'm used to riding your regular clincher tires with an inner tube and I normally run them at about 100 to 110 PSI. These I can run at 70 and it makes such a world of difference. I was skeptical at first about how, how much difference tubeless, tubeless rims would make, but they just feel so incredible. I don't know if I'd ever go back to your kind of regular inner tube tires, to be honest with you. Okay, let's have a quick chat now about the stiffness of, of these wheels that I've got on. So the fact is that the components on these are pretty top end. So you've got some really decent Sapien spokes and you've also got some really decent DT Swiss 350 hubs. Pair those with a really well constructed rim and these wheels are stiff. They're really, really good. Really nice to ride. They are actually a little bit stiffer noticeably than my eBay carbon rims. And I think that's just down to the fact that these are higher quality components. And the, I think the spoke tension is a little bit higher as well. Anyway, the fact remains that these are super stiff and they're great in the sprints. You don't lose any power when you're kind of really throwing it through the pedals. They don't flex at all and you can really feel it and they just feel great quality. Okay, so let's have a quick chat about uh, the weight quickly. So these are 1580 for the pair and that's actually the same weight as my uh, other eBay carbon rims. The difference being, however, these don't have to have inner tubes with them. So the combined weight of the wheels is much less actually, about 300 grams less uh, than my eBay rims. And you honestly really feel that uh, when you're accelerating out the lights, for example. Just the reduced weight means these spin up and accelerate really nicely. Okay, cool. So let's have a chat about braking quickly. So when I first got these, I threw on the prime carbon specific brake pads I shown on the channel previously. And you know what, they were good, they were fine. They worked as they did on my eBay rims. But I contacted uh, Fastboards and asked them exactly what brake pads they recommended for these. And obviously they recommended the most expensive set of brake pads that you can buy, which is Swiss Stop Flash Pro Black Prince, which are the ones I'm running now. And it pained me to pay 30 pounds for a set of four, but it's what they suggested and it's what I've gone for. And you know what? I've got no complaints. They are actually, actually good. Whether they're worth the premium, I'm still unsure of, but they break nicely. And the, the rims themselves, they break really well. Whether they break better than my eBay carbon rims, I would say yes. Yes, they do, but not massively better. But overall, the braking performance 
is pretty special in the dry and in the wet it's pretty good as well so let's chat quickly all right let's find let's let's finish up with the overall feel so overall these wheels honestly feel fantastic uh, they do actually feel a lot better than my ebay carbon rims and i think that a lot of that is down to the fact they're tubeless but part of it is down to the construction as well and the quality of the spokes and the rims it does it does make a difference to be honest with you as much as i would love to say that the ebay carbon rims are as good you pay a premium for these and you can really feel it so uh, anyway that's all so back to luke in the studio thanks trace for that wonderful report, what a guy. Um, but no, seriously, I think you can tell I am rather fond of these delicious set of rims, but we still have another topic to discuss. So the cost of these wheels, as I've got them set up here, is just over 700 bucks or around 500 and 50 quid. So you could get them cheaper if you spec'd them out with some cheaper hubs for example, so you could put in uh, Novatech hubs, uh, which are actually pretty good in my opinion, or you could swap out the rim entirely. So these rims here are Fastbort's kind of top of the line K's rims for 2019, and they've kind of got the, the fancy braking compound and stuff. Um, Fastbort's actually have hundreds of different options depending on your budget or whatever. But the question is, these rims here, are they worth it? So you've got these eBay carbon rims here, which I paid 300 pounds for, and they're pretty amazing. I gave them a really glowing review in my previous videos, and I stand by it. So if maybe you have a slightly smaller budget, or it's kind of your first set of carbon rims for your bike, I can recommend these wheels here every day of the week. But if you have a few extra quid lying around, or maybe you're not willing to kind of throw your money at a set of unbranded carbon rims, then I can pretty much guarantee that these rims here will not disappoint. So my whole ethos with this channel has been to basically show you guys that you can pick up near pro level bike gear for a fraction of the price and, and not have to pay those enormous premiums. And in my opinion, these rims still fit well within that kind of that category. Yes, they are more premium than my eBay rims, but then again, those are completely unbranded and also they're not tubeless compatible. Once you start comparing these rims to kind of equivalent name brand rims, then the value really starts to show through. For example, a similar set of Roval carbon tubeless rims with the same DT Swiss 350 hubs that I've got on here actually, those Roval ones will set you back £1,300 um, which is $1,660. So these are still incredible value, in my opinion. Anyway, as I've already mentioned in this video, I've only done about 400 or so miles on these rims. They've performed flawlessly up to this point, like no issues at all. But I mean, 400 miles is not a great deal of mileage. So I'll be posting an update once I've thrown some decent mileage on these rims. Uh, one more thing, I've also thrown a link in the video description to where you can get a set of these yourself if you fancy it. And I've also thrown some key stats about the wheels down there as well, just for you to reference. Anyway, that is all for today. So subscribe if you like stuff like this. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions or any comments about these delicious set of carbon rims here, or carbon rims in general, then throw them down in the comments below and I'll try to get back to as many of you as I can. Anyway, that is all. So I'll catch you next time.